Welcome back. My name is Catherine Paquet. We're going to continue configuring our email security appliance. What we want to do is control the sender. Who can send messages to us? The first part of that control will be done with what we call the host access table. Host access table is a fairly large topic. So I have split this large topic into two videos. Part one, we will tackle sender group. Part two, we will tackle mail flow policies. So let's get going with hat sender group. You recognize the pipeline. I'm going to use it on almost every recording. So what portion of the email pipeline are we going to tackle? We're going to be tackling what has been regrouped together into host access table. So what we want to deal with is actually will be mainly sender reputation. That's what we're going to be tackling in, in this one section. Part of the security and control, we see all the hoops that our email will need to go through to be eventually be accepted and delivered to our user. So the portion we wish to tackle now is that sender reputation. That happens right at the start of the connection. Now where do we go to control what incoming TCP session are we accepting and how do we deal with that TCP session? We will do that under the mail policy menu under hat overview. So hat stands for host access table. What's the purpose of the host access table? Is actually we're using it to define which hosts are allowed to connect on the listener. So we're listening on port 25, but do we want absolutely every mail transfer agent in the world to be able to send email to our organization? No, we want to do some filtering. Now, the best place to actually start with the filtering would be right during the TCP handshake. Start filtering those email right at layer four. Each listener, so each of your interfaces, if you want to think this way, so each listener, the listener is when you're listening for incoming traffic, incoming email, and typically port 25. So each listener, if you have a private or a public, they all have their hat. And the hat is telling a listener, who are you, you when you receive an email, who are you allowed to accept email from? Now, there's different action depending on the type of listener. On the previous recording, we discussed that you can have private listeners and public listeners. Let's start with public listener because that's the one that comes the most naturally when we think about it. So a public listener is typ typically facing accepting traffic. is the, the listener typically accepting traffic coming from the internet. That listener can decide to block traffic, accept traffic, or throttle traffic. Now, what would make it decide to block traffic, accept traffic, and throttle traffic? We'll see that actually in the upcoming slides. Then a private listener would be what we call a relay listener. So when you have your, let me rephrase that, my private listener, just to make sure I said private and not public, my private listener is actually pointing to my corporate exchange server. And we have the, inter the, the internet over here, and that would be actually over here, my public listener. Now, what's the job of my private listener? The job of your private listener is to actually relay the traffic. So this guy, will, my private, will receive email. The only place that an email can be arriving when it arrives on my private email, we will have mentioned that it's your Exchange server. And if your Exchange server send you email for, for the ESA, what do you do with it? You relay it back to the internet. So the job of a private listener is to relay email back to the internet. But what do you do if you have actually only one listener? So if you have only one listener, so you have your email security appliance over here, maybe you have your firewall pointing to the internet, and this particular email security appliance is responsible, and by the way, 
technically speaking, it should be actually, if we want to be proper, it would not be sitting actually right on the inside. Best practice calls it for, uh, for our email security appliance to actually be sitting on the demilitarized zone. So that would be a um, more secure, okay? So best practice would say sit on the demilitarized zone. So because we have one interface, this guy will actually be receiving our one listener, to take the proper terminology. My public listener over here will have two jobs. It's going to be accepting email arriving from the internet, and it will therefore block, accept, throttle that traffic. And we will also have told our public listener, oh, by the way, you need to relay if you receive traffic from the exchange. So when you receive an incoming session, port 25, coming to the IP address of my exchange server, you're relaying, relaying the, traffic, the, the email. If you're receiving an incoming port 25 session from anybody else but my exchange server, then analyze that session and you can block, accept, or throttle the traffic. So part of the hat, so when traffics arrive in the hat, the traffic, the first, first thing happens when we are doing the three-way handshake during the TCP session, we will have the sender group. The traffic will be assigned to a sender group. And part of attached to that sender group will be what we call mail flow policy. As I mentioned before, hat is a large topic, so I decided to actually separate that topic in two portions. And now what we're going to talk about is the sender group. So here's we're having actually the uh, a figure of actually when we go under mail policy, under hat overview, what do you get to see? You get to see the sender group. That will be what we will discuss in this part one of talking about the hat. And in part two, in the next recording, we will actually discuss mail flow policy. So let's focus right now just on the, on the sender group. So when traffic arrive, you will, the traffic will arrive either on your public or your private listener. So in this particular uh, figure, we have actually two listeners. We have one called outbound mail. Outbound mail is most probably not most probably, it is definitely, if it's outbound mail, I have my exchange server here. This guy, my listener over here, I give it the name outbound mail. And I have actually another listener over here, and my other listener is called simply public. So when traffic arrives, if traffic arrives, let's say from the public, as traffic arrives in the public, the first step we're going to do when we see the three-way handshake arriving. So when you have an MTA that is sending email and it's got a SYN packet arriving on the ESA, the ESA will look at the IP address of the sending MTA and will try to match it with one of those sender group. For the relay and the white list and the black list, it's possible for us to go and have put in domain name, IP addresses, that, so those are manually added. I'm sorry, blacklist, let me, blacklist, well, blacklist, you could actually go and add manual IP address yourself and host name if you wanted to, but the blacklist, suspect list, and unknown list are also selected per their score, their sander base reputation score. Sender base reputation score is a score that TELUS is assigning to IP address based on past activity that happened from that particular IP address. You'll remember from my first recording, we saw actually that TELUS in real time is monitoring the level of activity for email uh, around the world and it knows that there's good actors, but just sending a lot of email. There's also bad actors propagating malware and other actors that are not propagating malware, but just propagating a lot of spam. So 
Tell us, keep tracks of all those IP addresses that it's aware of, and it assigns them actually a score between minus 10 and plus 10. Now, by default, with the score that you get, that get assigned by Talos, we will have an action, a default action that, that, that is assigned. So the score between minus 10 and minus 3, we will simply reject. So it's a known spammer. It's someone that Talos says, don't even do your three-way and shake with them. Simply reject their TCP request. If the score is between minus 3 and minus 1, we will we'll say, well, we'll accept the connection, but actually we will impose some limitation of how many emails per hour they can send us. But we will nevertheless accept their email. And if the score is greater than minus 1, we will accept their email, and we won't be as strict about imposing some limitation on their connection. So, the score, the sender base reputation score, get checked actually right at the beginning of our connection, right during the three-way handshake. That's where your ESC can decide, I'm dropping this connection, I'm not accepting this connection, or yes, I'm accepting this connection. So controlling incoming SMTP connection, with two listeners. We have here that we have our incoming mail. So that's going to be my public listener. And we're receiving mail, actually. In this particular uh, example, we have this outside.com. And outside.com is sending an email to our ESA. The ESA, obviously, is receiving that email on its public listener. What the ESA does upon receiving the SYN request for TCP, the ESA will turn around and in step two, the ESA will query his sender base in real time and say, what's the reputation score? The reputation score that we get for this particular IP address as a sender is that the score is minus 2.7. The ESA will match that minus 2.7 back into the hat. And into the hat, we have here, and we mentioned that before, that if your score is between minus 1 and minus 3, we will accept the connection, but you're falling under the suspect list called, the, you're falling under the sender group called suspect list. And if you fall under suspect list, we will accept your connection, but we will assign some throttling on it. That will be the mail flow policy, which we will discuss in the next recording. Now, the second part of this is that once we have accepted that email, because we know that the score is OK, is acceptable, we need to read actually in the, um, let me rephrase that. We have not accepted completely the email. We have accepted to do the three-way handshake. So once we finish doing the three-way handshake with the .85 sender, we will then start receiving the envelope. And part of the envelope, that sender will tell us who is he sending the email for. And the recipient of the email is exchange.juliet.com. Your ESA will then look into the RAT recipient access table to decide, am I in charge or not of exchange.juliet.com? Is that a domain that is inside my organization that I'm in charge of? And if we are in charge of that, of that domain, we will then accept the email and start processing it through all the security hoops that we have. What about if we have only one listener? Well, if you have one listener, as we mentioned before, that listener will need to do the job of being listening for incoming traffic on the outside, which would be fall either in whitelist, blacklist, suspect list, or unknown list. And also, we'd be responsible of relaying email that is arriving from my Exchange server to the outside world. So when you have only one listener, first, when you go on the drop down, well, you have only one thing there. It's called incoming mail. And when you have one single listener, that listener not only will have all what it needs for the 
email arriving from the outside, from the internet, but it will also have that relay list sender group. And under that relay list sender group, it will tell your email appliance that, oh yeah, it's okay for you to receive email from 0 0.10. You are responsible of relaying those email and send them to the internet. So how do we go and add a sender, as an example, to a whitelist or a blacklist? Uh, as I mentioned before, you can manually add, if you want, to the blacklist, but maybe whitelist. Maybe you have a business partner and you always, always want to be able to reach that business, to accept email from that business partner. And you're concerned that that business partner might have his reputation tarnished. So you want to whitelist that business partner. So you'll go under the whitelist and you can simply add, actually, under your whitelist, an IP address and therefore that business partner will never be stopped because it has a bad reputation. So thank you very much for listening to this recording where we discussed actually the host access table, the first part of a host access table which was on sender group. Stay tuned, next recording will be on part two for mail flow policy. See you soon.